happy Halloween, unless you're watching this any other time of the year. In which case, happy whatever it is you're doing. Happy steak and lapsang day, I don't know. Either way, it's time for me to recommend to you some underrated horror movies. Now the word underrated is obviously subjective. These are just four films that I don't think get the attention they deserve. You might disagree with me, of course. You might know a lot of people who love these flicks. Heck, I'm on a horror group on Facebook where someone was adamant that Nightmare on Elm Street 3, the widely accepted fan favourite, was the most underrated in the series, simply because she personally had never met someone who liked the movie. So it's really subjective and based on my own experience. The point I am desperately clawing at here, folks, is that if you don't find these films underrated, that's fine. Uh, it's not worth getting wound up about. Same goes for if you don't find certain films scary, and I say that I do. It's all opinion based. I didn't think Hereditary was very scary. Don't get me wrong, I liked the film very much, but everyone kept telling me how terrifying it was and I didn't agree. So, you know, not worth having a rant about. Let's, let's get going, let's make a start. It's not done before. Okay, so we're starting with a proper golden age movie here. Released in 1933 by Paramount, Island of Lost Souls tells the rather disturbing story of a shipwrecked sailor who finds himself on an island research centre, run by the mysterious Dr. Moreau, played with a fantastic mix of sinister charisma and sleaze by Charles Lawton. Moreau is experimenting with bizarre, cruel surgeries, creating human-like creatures from animals. Island also features a great secondary performance from Bela Lugosi, who, under tons of makeup and fur, still manages to convey a lot of anguish. Most people, when they hear the name Bela Lugosi, will think of Dracula. Some may also think of Igor in Son of Frankenstein, or they might even think of one of Lugosi's collaborations with Ed Wood. But this performance is a very good one and should not be overlooked. And too often is overlooked. The whole film has an uncomfortable atmosphere, a feeling of dread. You're always aware that the creatures could break free from Moreau's dark menagerie at any time, which does help keep the tension high during the slower scenes. By modern standards, the pacing is very slow, and if you're not a fan of golden age films like Frankenstein or The Mummy, you probably won't get much from this one, to be honest. But if you like the old Universal Pictures, or if you're a fan of the H.G. Wells novel perhaps, this one is definitely worth a watch. It's available on Amazon Prime, and at 71 minutes, what have you got to lose? From something old to something very modern next, Hell House is a 2015 low-budget found footage movie, and from that description alone you may already be feeling put off. I didn't expect much when uh, I caught it on Amazon Prime, but man did this flick surprise me. The story is simple but effective. Back in 2009 there was a Halloween scare attraction called Hell House, which opened in upstate New York. I'd never heard of it in Utica, but I'm told it was an Albany attraction. On the night Hell House opened, an unknown malfunction caused the deaths of 15 tourists, as well as most of the staff. Years later, the footage leading up to the tragedy resurfaces, and much like a jigsaw puzzle, the various video clips help us to piece together what really happened that fateful opening night. And can I just say how inspired the setting is in this movie? The crew used a real Halloween ghost house attraction for authenticity, and some of the props are quite unsettling. The idea of real supernatural horror happening amongst fun, safe, fake scares has been done before, but it's executed so damn well here I just have to give the crew my respect. It's often intentionally difficult to tell which ghostly apparitions are part of the show and which ones aren't. You constantly feel like the characters are surrounded by a malevolent presence in the old hotel that they're turning into Hell House. The acting is a mixed bag, but luckily the central performance from Gore Abrams, perfect horror name by the way, as uh, Paul the cameraman, is very strong and helps hold the film together. The actors are all good enough to portray realistic panic and terror, uh, which definitely helps as the presence, uh, the darkness in the old hotel becomes more vicious and aggressive as the movie goes on. Hell House isn't perfect, of course. Some of the exposition and setup is a little on the nose, uh, to say the least. And the epilogue pushes the suspension of disbelief um, quite a bit too far for my tastes. But for the most part, the scares work. Things appearing and disappearing in the flashes of a strobe light. Strange noises. The scariest clown prop I've ever seen that seems to have a mind of its own. These kind of subtle horror techniques are used throughout with very few jump scares. And there are some jump scares, the ones that are there, they really work. There isn't an over-reliance on those video glitches you get, you know, Marble Hornet's ass, video glitches. Um, 
or people running around shaking the camera. It's very restrained. It's a restrained film that has the confidence to scare you without relying on cheap thrills. And it's a damn shame the bland found footage pictures like Paranormal Activity get a ton of attention and something genuinely creative like Hell House doesn't even have enough reviews to have a Rotten Tomato score. At 93 minutes, it's relatively short, but delivers a ton of atmospheric scares that really got under my skin. So much so that I didn't want to go right to bed afterwards and watched a bunch of funny videos for a while. The setting and subject matter make it an ideal Halloween double feature with something like Trick or Treat or even Halloween 3. Check it out. Hold on a second, why is he talking about Ring? It got a remake, this is how you speak. It got a remake and tons of sequels, surely it can't be underrated, except it totally is. The remake is so popular, people act like this version doesn't even exist. Whenever I watch a video about really scary movies, or have a conversation about the scariest movies ever made, etc, etc, people only ever want to talk about the goddamn Gore Verbinski version. Again, what is it with the name Gore today, by the way? Normally, when a horror remake is more famous than the original, it's because the remake surpasses it. As much as I like the Kurt Newman version of The Fly, there's a reason most people only know the David Cronenberg reimagining. As enjoyable the, as the original The Thing from Another World can be, the average horror fan knows the John Carpenter version instead because it honestly surpasses it in every way. But with The Ring, the remake is, in my opinion, utterly inferior. It's sort of like if nobody remembered the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre after the 2003 version. Anyway, I'm not here to actually slag movies off, I'm here to promote them. So, what makes Ring, the original, so good? Well, a lot of it comes down to uh, Hideo Nakata's direction. He takes the creative but simplistic idea of a videotape cursed by the enraged spirit of a murdered child, who, you know the story, and he soaks the entire thing in an atmosphere that I can only describe as nightmarish. Now, that's a word people often use when they mean scary, but that's not what I mean. I'm talking literally like a nightmare. The cinematography, acting, colour grading, sound design, and particularly pacing made me feel like I was having a terrible dream the whole time I was watching. It's difficult to explain, but there wasn't a moment during my first viewing that I ever felt comfortable or even safe, to be honest. As I say, it's difficult to put into words, but the mood of every single scene is so dreamlike and dark and weird that I felt completely creeped out even after the movie had finished. But I couldn't pin down a single specific image that was causing me that distress. That's not to say there isn't some scary imagery, because there's loads. And it's rarely, if ever, accompanied by loud, startling noises. But instead, uh, these scary images, they're, they're accompanied either by silence or just subtle, unnerving sound design. Things appearing in the reflection of the TV, for example, they feel realistic because there's no DUNG sound over the top. Hell, the fact that uh, the TV is a major source of horror in the film really works in its favour. Because I found myself looking over my shoulder for that towel-headed guy more than once. In the incredibly unlikely event that you don't know the ending, I won't spoil it for you. But it's so intense and completely disarms you, essentially uh, removing the safety of the glass screen that keeps the horrors out of your living room. I realise a lot of what I'm saying about Ring is abstract, but it is that kind of movie. It's the kind of movie that has to be experienced rather than just talked about. Along with Hell House, this is the one I'm most confident people won't have already seen. Written by Nigel Neal, the visionary writer responsible for Quatermass, and released in 1972 as a TV movie on Christmas Day of all days, the stone tape tells the story of a research team that move into an old Victorian house to start working on a new recording medium. While the house is only a hundred or so years old, the foundations are much, much older, and it doesn't take long for the team to start hearing screams coming from the old stone. Uh, the stone seems to have recorded something, hence the name, uh, something terrible that happened. The incredibly low budget and dated look of the picture may initially put modern viewers off, but trust me, you'll get past it. The writing is so compelling, and almost every scene reveals another detail of the mystery of this house and its ancient stone foundations, and uh, just how much worse the situation is than the optimistic nerds working there first believed. One of the things that's so exciting about it is they treat ghosts as a scientific phenomenon. 
It makes it feel very realistic. Now, without wanting to give too much away, there is a real sense of danger and unknowable evil as the film goes on. As I say, it all starts quite optimistic, but towards the end, they, they start using this very primitive electronic sound and, and visuals that they just add to the overall strange feeling of the film. The real star, though, is, is not the sound design, it's not the acting, it's the script. The script anchors the entire experience and keeps it from ever feeling hokey, even among some, I'll be honest, questionable acting from a few of the supporting players. It's, it's 1970s TV. The Stone Tape's biggest achievement is that it's actually scary in 2018. Contemporary horror TV may be far more sophisticated, but the low-key scares of this 1972 effort hold up remarkably well all the same. The movie is also available, not only to purchase on DVD, but I believe it's also free on YouTube as well. So, if you like the look of it, you should definitely check it out. So that was my list. There are a ton of other underappreciated movies I could have included, and I'm sure there are even more that I've never seen or even heard of. Have you watched any of the films I talked about today? If so, what did you think of them? Do you have any recommendations for me? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comments. If you are watching at Halloween, I hope you've had a good Halloween. If you're watching some other time, I hope you're having a good some other time. And I'll see you at the next video.